us a recipe of truth, lies, and love in advertising makes a delicious treat and highly addictive book series. Let's find out tonight. Greetings and welcome to the July 2021 edition of the South Florida Writers Association, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote literary arts and support of writers. Visit www.southfloridawriters.org for more information and member benefits. My name is Evelyn Benson, and I am thrilled to introduce our featured author, Adele Royce, who will discuss her trilogy of novels tonight and her three books, Princess Mine, Camera Ready, and for position only. Miss Royce, born and raised in Los Angeles, graduated magna cum laude from Arizona State University with a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature. She survived the insanity of the Las Vegas Strip, where she worked for many years as an advertising and public relations executive. Her personal experience with the industry's creativity and chaos gave her inspiration for her multiple book series entitled, Truth, Lies, and Love in Advertising. She lives with her husband in South Florida, where she is active in the writing community. Her short stories have won numerous first place awards. Visit her website at www.adelroyce.com. Her books are available for sale at Books and Books, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Google Play Books, Kindle, and other platforms. Friends, fellow writers, let's put our hands together for author Adele Royce. Thank you, Evelyn, for your very, very gracious introduction. Um, I'm really thrilled to be here and I welcome everyone and thanks for tuning in um, from wherever you are. I, um, before we get started, I wanna thank the South Florida Writers Association as well as Books and Books for keeping the author showcase tradition alive virtually and also for providing so much value to the community of readers and writers um, here in South Florida and elsewhere. Um, last year, I was featured uh, here discussing the first book released in my trilogy. It's called Camera Ready. This is the book, but today we're gonna focus on the successive two books um, in the trilogy, Princess Smile and Four Position Only. But uh, before I discuss uh, the books themselves, I wanna get into the series as a whole. Um, the genre is upmarket commercial fiction with a huge dose of contemporary romance. Um, and I describe these books as Sex in the City meets Mad Men. Um, sex in, in the City really because there's a ton of fashion and relationship issues and family and career drama um, and, and a lot of um, funny situations. Uh, there's a thread of comedy that goes through all three of these books because I try to keep things a little bit on the light side and then I have that touch of Mad Men. And the Mad Men side is really the real world of advertising um, in which I spent most of my career. And that um, has some darkness if you watch that series um, and um, all, all about the advertising world and kind of the behind the scenes look. I highly recommend this series if you're looking for a beach read or a vacation reads because they are fun and um, it's the start of summer, so why not? And um, so several of my readers commented that with the series, I created this world that really didn't exist before. And um, I, I put some thought into that because it really was a compelling thing to think about. This world never existed. It really is an escape. It's um, you know a world that, that I created. 
And I got with my marketing team and we came up with a really cool way to present the series. So I'm gonna take you and I'm gonna share my screen um, to my website, which just recently debuted. Um, it went live like a week ago. And um, so this is the world of Adele Royce. And this, I'm just gonna take us through, before I read a couple of passages from the books, just take us through the website because it really tells you a lot. And I'm like you, if I've never read an author and it's a debut um, novelist, I'm sort of, you know, I wanna know a little bit about what I'm getting before I commit to reading the book. So why don't we talk a little bit about the website? So here we go. Truth, Lies, and Love in Advertising, a highly addictive book series. So as you can see, um, there's a spray of pink and leopard and lips and purple. And we have the LA skyline here because all three books are set in Los Angeles where I grew up. Um, and I wanna say something about the way I release the books and the order I release them. I, I released Camera Ready first, but Camera Ready was actually the second book that I wrote. And um, I wanted to release that book first because I wanted the reader to sort of get in media res. So um, you're starting in sort of the middle of the action and there's some baggage from the past that, that you find out about when you read the book. And then of course, four position only is the sequel. So I released Camera Ready, I released the sequel for position only. And then just a couple of weeks ago, I released the prequel to Camera Ready, uh, Princess Smile. So I would suggest, I mean, you could read these books in any order, really. You could pick one and just read one and you won't feel left out, like you need to read the other books. But if you're gonna read them in order, I would suggest reading Princess Smile first, reading Camera Ready and um, for position only last, because that is the grand finale. Um, so yeah, so these books, um, I'm going to tell, I mean, a little bit about what it is, um, and I, I kind of encapsulate it here. Welcome to the City of Angels, where angels don't really exist. This is the unsettling world of Los Angeles advertising, where glossy, high fashion campaigns obscure the power, sex, and corruption underneath. Okay, and so we have these sort of icons, if you can see them. Um, you know, the yacht, uh, the plane, the high heels and the champagne is sort of give you an idea that it's a little bit of a jet setting uh, world <laughs> that I've created. Um, and of course, I just want to highlight that Books and Books is always the first buy option on my list only because I, we all want to support our local booksellers. So one of the things that I want to draw your attention to is the characters. But before we get into them, I'm just going to read this. This is a world whose inhabitants think nothing of blurring moral and ethical barriers. They play to win, but winning comes with a heavy price. Um, and there are no angels in this book for sure. Every character is flawed. But one of the comments I get a lot from my readers is that the characters are so memorable and they want to know them or they feel like they do know them and they kind of jump off the page. And um, even I had a woman uh, reader who said, I want to go shopping with Jane. And what's so funny is um, it was before Princess Smile was released. And I said, oh my gosh, this is your book because there's a scene that any woman who likes shopping would be in a total fantasy <laughs> world. So um it was just a, a great comment, I thought. So the characters, here's what we did with the website. We thought we'd introduce the main characters. I'm gonna scroll us down here to because these two people here, Jane Mercer and Craig Keller are the main characters. Now, what I did with Jane, our heroine, is she, she actually is uh, the narrator of both Princess Smile and Camera Ready. And um, so, her voice, her perceptions, her POV is all you really see for the first two books. And so I'm going to show a little bit about her because we had some fun doing descriptions of these guys. So if you hover over her, we find out um, that she's age 26. I actually started them with the first book. So she's in, in Princess Ball, she's 26 years old. She is director of accounts at Warren Mitchell and Associates. 
Um, and what does director of accounts do if you don't know advertising that person actually is the face to the client? So they meet with the client, they bring feedback to the creative department, they control basically the relationship. So it's the face that is holding the client's hand at all times and making them happy. Um, it's not always a pleasant job. <laughs> and, um, you know, Jane encounters some really trying stuff while she's um, babysitting or navigating different people's personalities, which is what her job is. What does Jane want? She is um, someone who wants couture on a budget. She wants a bigger apartment. She wants to be good at something. And she wants true love. Um, her poison, because all of these guys have a poison, is Dom Perignon when someone else is buying. And her kryptonite is Craig Keller. Okay, so we know a little bit about Jane. And like I said, she is the protagonist um, for the first two books. Craig Keller is the villain, and he is a very much a pure villain, especially in Princess Smile. Let's talk about him for a second. He's 36, so he's 10 years older than Jane. Look, been around the block a little bit. Um, managing partner of Keller Whitman Group, that is the agency that is the rival agency of the one that Jane works for originally. And there's a lot of competition going on among these two agencies, lots of rivalry. Um, Craig resides in Brentwood. If you don't know California, Brentwood is a very affluent area, obviously, because Craig wants original Chagalls and beautiful women and relentless workouts and to win at all costs. Um, his special poison is a rare scotch that he keeps in a wall safe next to his bed. And he only has maybe a couple sips per night, but um, he keeps that scotch along with his other valuables in the safe. We don't find out about that until four position only, but it's kind of a, uh, a fun thing. His kryptonite, of course, is Jane. So really, the story revolves around these two characters who have an endless love-hate dynamic. They're either lovers or they're enemies or they're manipulating each other or they're stabbing each other in the back or they're in love or whatever. So that these two are the stars, right? But every star or pair of stars needs a supporting cast. So what we did is create basically the same type of profile for um, these other characters. And I'm just going to go through them quickly. If you want to check this out and have some fun with this site, I urge you to go to AdeleRoyce.com and just check them out, read them yourselves, um, because they all have, you know, an occupation, they live somewhere, they have wants, and they have a poison and a kryptonite. Derek is Jane's love interest uh, through all the three books. And basically, just to quickly tell you about my characters, these eight appear in all three books, but they may have a lesser or a bigger uh, level of importance. Um, and that's because I'm talking out of two different people's uh, point of view. So in two books, you're in Jane's head. So she obviously has friends and she has a love interest. But then when you're in Craig's head, there's a whole other set of characters and these other characters may be on the periphery. So what I try to do is drop some of the minor characters in uh, Princess Smile that you meet there. And then you'll see uh, these same characters in camera ready. And then I'll drop some of those characters off and then for position only, we'll spotlight a few more. So really quickly, Marissa Silva is Jane's best friend. She works for, she's a news anchor at KVLA, which is a fictitious um, station in LA that I made up. Um, this is uh, Warren Mitchell, that's Jane's boss. He is managing partner of Warren Mitchell and Associates. And if you know something about advertising, his big claim to fame is that he was mentored at a youthful age uh, by uh, David Ogilvy, um, which is a big deal, really, <laughs> if it were true. Kat Blakely is one of Jane's friends. Um, she appears strongly in Princess Smile and in Camaretti, but she kind of plays a lesser role in um, in four position only. Jeffrey Vance 
That's Jane's work husband. He is the creative director at Warren Mitchell and Associates. Again, um, he's, he's kind of like Jane's brother, um, the one she never had. So he he's in all three books and is always um, has a pretty pretty decent role, supporting role. Bobby Silverstein is the media queen. We call her. Uh, she works for Craig Keller actually, and her we don't meet her until camera ready, but she um, she becomes a very, very strong and pivotal role in four position only. She's very close to Craig, which is an unlikely thing when you kind of get to know him, but he's very, very close to her. Alonzo Costa is the creative director at Keller Whitman Group. Again, somebody we don't meet until camera ready, but he plays a really, really solid role in four position only. I call him Craig's creation and I won't tell you why, you'll just have to find that out by reading Hayden. Okay, so Hayden Town is the woman you love to hate. I actually made her, um, um, she she's becomes like sort of a sub villain in this novel um, and she works for Craig, but then I really, really smoothly slide her in to this novel as the villain. And I just got to say, you know, I'm an equal opportunity villain writer. Um, they don't always have to be men or women or whoever. It's, it's just kind of the way this turned out. So these are the characters and, um, and here's where they work. And we even did a little profile on the agencies themselves. They're both fictitious, all right? So Keller Women Group is an uh, advertising agency. They're national. They have been around eight years. Um, you find out why Craig's agency is a little bit younger than Warren's. Um, they are located downtown. They want to be king of the world. And um, <laughs> their reputation is big man on campus. Um, so they are the main agency. Um, Warren Mitchell and Associates, they are a, what we call a boutique agency. So they, they're smaller, they don't have as many employees. Um, they're located downtown Santa Monica, maybe a little bit more casual atmosphere. But what do they want? They wanna be in the big leagues. They wanna be with Craig. They want to be right there. They want, and their reputation is they have very good creative, which means they produce beautiful advertising. They never hook the big one. They don't get the big clients like Craig Kelly does. So that's kind of the difference between the agencies. Um, we detail this uh, on the website. Here's again, the LA skyline. And um, I, again, I urge you go and have some fun with this website. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the other things we're doing with this site, but let's go back up to the books because, um, um, you know, I'm gonna do a little bit of reading. Princess Smile, like I said, is the prequel to Camera Ready. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that book first. It's, I'm just gonna read a little bit from the back cover because it'll give you an idea of what it's about. Um, it's of course narrated by lovable but flawed Jane Mercer. Um, Jane struggles with her self-image while reaching for the stars in the cutthroat world of Los Angeles advertising. As she claws her way up to the position of director of accounts at the ad agency Warren Mitchell and Associates, her career goals force her into fierce competition with the client's unreasonable and sordid requests, and she frantically seeks an escape. Enter the savagely handsome Craig Keller managing partner of rival agency Keller Whitman Group. Jane has admired him from afar and he's taken a sudden interest in her. Offering a prestigious high paying position along with a long list of benefits that only existed in her wildest dreams. Jane is willingly lured, and I say willingly, into Craig's professional and romantic web, quickly learning that his money, attention and affection come with an even higher price one that she is not sure she can pay. Um, it's a high stakes tale of ambition, friendship, secrets, brutality, and desire. Princess Smile is a must read for the contemporary woman, okay? And I think, I, I didn't mention this earlier, I think of all my books, Princess Smile is mostly going to resonate with women, but the other two um, uh, have been enjoyed by both sexes. I'm gonna read a scene, and this will tell you a lot because this is the first time Jane meets Craig, we know from the cover copy that she has admired him from afar, but I'm just gonna read a little bit about their first meeting so you can kind of get an idea of, um, and again, this isn't her voice, this is in Jane Mercer. 
Every ad agency in town had representation here. Oh, by the way, they're at a party at the Shangri-La Hotel in Los Angeles. I actually went there and uh, wrote this scene while I was there so I could make sure it was authentic. <clears throat> I made my way toward the pool where a crowd was building as cameras flashed. The evening air was cool and crisp and the moon was full, hanging bright and low. There was obviously a celebrity in one of the private cabanas. So I headed in that direction to see who it was and felt one of my stiletto heels get stuck in the teak floorboards. That was it. I tripped and fell in my new Chanel. Champagne spilling everywhere, purse and contents flying. My foot had come out of the shoe, which had stayed stuck between the floorboards. Horrified, I quickly tried to recover my shoe. The dim candlelight was not helping in my quest. It was dark and I would barely see anything. After tugging on the shoe several times, it finally came free. <laughs> I crawled around on all fours to find my bag and gather its contents as a man's deep voice offered, may I help you? I looked up and with the light of the shining moon recognized Craig Keller of the fabled Keller Whitman group. He was holding out his hand. Trembling, I accepted it and he helped me up. I clutched my shoe and thought about all the hours I had spent researching him over time. I had seen so many pictures of him, it made no sense to see him in person. He had become a, an unattainable computer generated myth. He might as well have been a cartoon character. Are you okay? He asked. He was even more magnificent up close with his gleaming white teeth, light eyes and dark hair. But there was something else about him, something the photos couldn't even begin to capture. It was a charisma of sorts an aura of charm. Yes, thank you, I answered, straightening and brushing off my dress, which was wet and sticky with champagne and dirt from the teak deck. I'm sure that looked inelegant. On the contrary, he replied with a warm smile, you pulled it off with grace. Before I could respond, he continued, have we met? I'm Craig Keller. Yes, Mr. Keller, of course, I know who you are. I responded, feeling disheveled and self-conscious, especially since he was dressed in an impeccable gray pinstripe suit with a white shirt and dark crimson silk tie. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Jane Mercer. I long to make a run for it and call, find a bathroom and a mirror. Call me Craig, he said again with that smile. I couldn't help but feel intimidated. I was talking to Craig Keller, one of the most sought after men in town, one of LA's preeminent ad men. His agency, um, a juggernaut in the industry. Though I had never actually seen him in person, he felt oddly familiar to me from all the cyber stalking. He was indeed like a movie star, tall, dark-haired, green-eyed, and wildly successful. And I was now standing before him in a stained Chanel dress, holding one Manolo Blahnik. May I? He asked, eyes on my shoe. Without waiting for a response, he gently took the shoe out of my hand and knelt. He placed my hand on his shoulder for balance, lifted my foot and slid the shoe back on. I thought my heart might stop. And I'm stopping there with this book. So that will give you an idea of Jane and Craig's first meeting. How is that gonna turn out? Is it gonna turn out the way she wants or is it gonna turn out in some other way? We'll find out. So I'm gonna move over to four position only. I actually don't need to hold these books up because they're already on screen, but I'm gonna read from the back cover because um, as everything in advertising, things aren't always as they seem. So we're skipping a few years and we're going into Craig's mind and body and soul. And we're gonna find out what's going on in his head that makes him so awful <laughs> in these first couple of books. Um, so for position only, the sequel to Camera Ready is an evocative tale of one man's sin and redemption woven into the fabric of the advertising business where lies run rampant and the truth is manipulated. Craig Keller is LA's preeminent ad man, wealthy, powerful, and a notorious playboy. At least that's what he'd like everyone to think. In reality, Craig's business is plummeting uh, at the hands of blonde bombshell and spurred ex-girlfriend Hayden Town. He is also haunted by the gruesome death of his brother, which occurred under suspicious circumstances. 
Craig's only chance to salvage his career is to propose a partnership with longtime rival Warren Mitchell, his former mentor, whose business Craig cavalierly took down in the past. And although Craig's advertising prowess can catapult Warren's business to the top of the market, Craig's womanizing reputation comes with a price. Craig is specifically warned to avoid Jane Mercer, Craig's ex-lover and Warren's agency partner. Remember, this is a few years, several, several years later. Um, Craig has privately carried a torch for Jane for years, despite her visceral hatred of him. Her presence is a painful reminder that he lost the one, one woman he always wanted because he treated her so badly. As the barriers between them slowly break down, Craig is now faced with the ultimate dilemma. If he dives into a relationship with Jane, his livelihood is in jeopardy. If he rejects her, he will miss out on his one true love. Okay, I'm gonna read a passage from Four Position Only and I picked this one because I like, it gives you a sample of some of the advertising behind the scenes stuff that goes on in these novels. Um, but I particularly, I particularly like this one. Um, it's actually a presentation um, that Craig has to make to a fictitious wedding website uh, client that I've called OurVows.com. So he goes into this meeting. This is getting towards the latter part of the book. It's chapter 17. This is Craig talking, remember? So we're in his head now. When I entered the conference room, everyone was already seated, including the client team. It was a large group, maybe 15 people. I immediately spotted Jane. There was one open chair left directly across from her and next to Warren. I quickly took the seat, scanning the table, acknowledging Alonzo and Jeffrey, Jeffrey but purposefully ignoring Jane. Craig Keller, Warren announced brashly with a proud smile, our consummate award winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig is the most important, or important partner at this agency. I noted the OurVows.com group looking my way and murmuring appreciatively, especially the women who suddenly looked interested in the pitch meeting. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Jane wearing a snug fitting white dress with long sleeves and a bow tied at the neck. I tried to erase her from my memory and imagine she was some fat, sloppy guy sitting across from me. It was tough. I turned to Alonzo and nodded. Alonzo began the preamble about the ad concepts. As usual, there were three and the last one was key. We strategically had Alonzo present the first two, knowing he would pass the baton to me and I would present the third, the one we wanted them to approve. I even asked Alonzo to present pedantically so that they would be bored to death by the time they got to the third and final ad. I absentmindedly flipped through the printed deck sitting in front of me while Alonzo presented slides, taglines, and sample copy, rapping on the table intermittently as usual for no apparent reason. I wasn't even paying attention until Alonzo cued me. Boss, I stood and strutted to the head of the table as Alonzo changed sides to the slides to the final concept. What is love? I began surveying the room, my eyes moving from one person to the next, skipping Jane completely. Everyone returned my glance with sudden interest, but was silent. It's the promise of brightness and beauty. It's fantasy, it's sensuality. It's a chance at new life. It's fresh and gorgeous, like a light rain in spring. The room remained silent as all eyes were on me, and for some reason I could no longer control where my eyes wandered. I was looking directly at Jane. She was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. Love gives us courage, I continued, eyes now locked on Jane's. It makes us whole. It helps us forget tragedy. In fact, there's no more human way to numb the pain of loneliness, to mitigate the agony of rejection. I was speaking unswervingly to Jane now, like there was no one else in the room. I wasn't paying attention to the slide changes because I knew Alonzo was keeping up with me. I had no interest in what was going on outside Jane's penetrating stare. It's that inexorable, irrepressible power of love that gives us life, energy, and a reason to get up in the morning. I briefly glanced at the others in the room, 
They were fixated on me like they were under hypnosis. I returned to Jane. When two people fall in love, they'll do anything to protect that love, that mystical, unfathomable feeling of finally being home. We try in vain to capture the elusive butterfly, to keep that love within our grasp forever. Jane cocked her head, lips parted and brows furrowed, but I kept going, not taking my eyes off hers for a minute. That's why we give diamonds. That's why we get on our knees and utter the most beautiful prose. It's a harmony that only happens once in a lifetime. And if you're lucky enough to find that rare, all encompassing true love, the only way to make it last forever is to set it free. I turned to view the final slide, which was the ad. So beautiful and perfect, a wedding couple in a field of greens spattered with daffodils, a woman wearing a white lace wedding gown with the most exhilarated look on her face, a man fawning over her, about to kiss her, but savoring her beauty first. I was ready to close the deal. So you see, marriage is really an extraordinary kind of freedom. Marriage is the freedom to love forever. The last sentence was the headline. I tore my gaze from Jane and looked from person to person. The women were in joyful tears like it was their wedding day all over again. The men were in awe. They began to clap and nod. Warren regarded me with an amazed expression. Jeffrey just shook his head and smiled. Alonzo studied me with pride. That's when I caught Jane standing and darting out of the room as quickly as she could. I breathed deeply knowing what was coming next. And I hope you're wondering what's coming next because um, there are some very interesting twists in all three of these novels, really. Um, that's really all I have because I know we have a minimal amount of time. Thank you so much for being with me here tonight from wherever you are. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much.